The individuals featured in this video did not receive compensation, free products, or discounted products for sharing their experiences with Katsu equipment. The views and opinions expressed are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Katsu Global. The experiences shared are personal to the interviewees and your results may differ. Always use Katsu equipment as directed and under the supervision of a qualified professional. Improper use may result in injury. I am at faster than I ever have been in my entire life in my 30s. I made NCAAs in my senior year at so one... NCAA championship. Yeah. Uh, okay. NCAA did collegiate one and oh, wow. NCAA that like... The yeah, elite the, the elite, and it was 155.3 okay. just this last year. In December, I'm 152.0. Hello, I'm Steven Munitonis, the CEO of Katsu Global. Hello, my name is Brandon Fisher. Um, I'm a brush stroker. We're here in Mission Viejo to find out how Katsu impacts the lives of elite athletes. I'm just um, in a, doing a competition right now. I just got done with the 200 brush stroke long course. Brandon Fisher was one of the top swimmers at the University of Wyoming. Swim the 200 today? Yeah, so in the 200 today, I got to, uh, that was prelims and finals tonight, 200. Tomorrow is the 50 breast, or the first thing in the morning, and last day is 100 and then 100. He was at the highest echelon of collegiate swimming at the age of 21 and 22. Now at the age of 35, he is faster than he was back then, training by himself, using katsu as his training tool. All breaststroke, nothing else. <laughs> so using katsu throughout the day. Doing a lot of recovery right now with my katsu uh, arms, and I'm gonna do my katsu legs later. He's using it when he's waking up, he's using it when he's training, he's using it walking around the office at at work. This is a stepping stone for uh, the Olympic trials in Indianapolis. How he does this, I don't know, but we'll find out. Let me introduce you to my friend Brandon, a Katsu user. So you're traveling, so you're always in a hotel room. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm renting cars, hotel, flying. I feel like a circus clown sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I work for Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. We do a, a lot of um, stuff that for the government and the Department of Energy. You're using your body, you're using your head, and you're, you're trying to balance training <laughs> to become an Olympian. Yes, and at 35 years old, I don't I don't think it's uh, it's no small feat, but it's not impossible. It's I think it's a matter of just making make the time. But recovery is a huge thing for me and rest, and I'm using all the tools I can ever imagine to uh, keep myself sharp. Because I'm 35 years old, I'm racing against kids that are like half my age. <laughs> Walk through a typical Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. So a typical Monday is I'm, I'm waking up at probably before five o'clock in the morning, um, and I'm just, I'm getting to waking my body up. I'm getting to doing some breathing exercises and trying to wake my body up and do, take a bunch of supplements. And I do a lot of breathing because I think the breath brings us back to the present. And one that we've lost an art over the many, many, many generations of learning how to properly breathe. As we control our breath, we're able to control the moment and be in the moment and not panic. That's like five o'clock in the morning and then I'm hitting the cardio for like 30 minutes or uh, what? for 30 to 45 minutes. And then- Cardio is what? I'm on the bike, but cardio for me is a lot different than other people. Yeah. I'm hitting my heart rate up like 160 beats per minute. <laughs> so I'm like really yeah. skyrocketing and I'm using the katsu to warm myself up before okay. my strength and conditioning. So you, you're rolling out of bed, you're brushing yeah. your teeth, washing your face, getting ready, putting your, your uh, training gear on. Mm -hmm. At what point do you use katsu? I use it in the beginning, like the cycles. Uh -huh. And then once I start doing my strength and conditioning, I use the constant. Per your recommendation, yeah. I've been increasing the constant SKU okay. standard every week by the like- pressure the, goes up. Yeah, the pressure by 10. Yeah, and, okay, good, good. And I alternate uh, my strength and conditioning from lower body, up, lower body, upper body each day. And I do always do abs every day, if not try to target or do something uncomfortable, because yeah. that's where the growth is. And then I do a lot of recovery, like stretching and doing meditation and, and stuff like that. Uh, and I've used gymnastics rings in my in my training to because gravity is a very, very interesting force applied to the body. So uh, this is all uh, before 6 a.m.? Oh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not part of the 5 a.m. club. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it, it, I'm up at 5 a.m., I'm doing all this, and then by the time seven, almost seven o'clock rolls around, I'm already like, okay, training's done. Get to work. I'm using actually uh, katsu to cycle myself down from this high that I've been on. So I'm trying to. Bring so you're myself. waking up and mm -hmm. cycling up, mm -hmm. being very intense. Yep. And then cycling yourself down. Yeah. I mean, you can't just like yep. go from uh, from 100 to zero. Right. <laughs> Physics uh, yeah. show that's that that's that yeah. bad things happen. Same thing applies with the body. And the, so I'm doing that as I'm getting ready. I'm packing my food. I prepared my food for breakfast. Um, second breakfast, uh, I'm a hobbit. <laughs> and the lunch, and then like afternoon snack, or like whatever, and then uh, like a dinner, and then I go to practice, and then I have dinner again. So I prepared all my meals throughout the day, the pr day prior. So I'm go to work, 
um, I kind of get back to get to my desk and take care of all the things. I'm not in training mode right now, but it's funny. I'm like, you having these on, and my colleagues are like, "What's that?" Like, well, you, oh, you do these at work? Yeah, I use these at work. Like, yes, <laughs> I use it at work. I, I, I walk around with it at work. I walk around. I let me ten thousand steps a day. Okay, so you're working out in the morning, mm -hmm. but you're also training your body. As you're working, you're killing two birds with one stone. Exactly. I'm all about that phrase, killing yeah. two birds with one stone. M the more times I can try to do something, like I wear, I walk around with like five, 10 pound ankle weights at work, I, too. So I walk around with that and I, I sort of, you see me like doing like stretches, standing still, like a flamingo pose or something. It's funny, like I am doing things throughout the day where I get, if I get like 10 minutes out of the day where I'm not being like, Brennan, we need this fixed. This is fascinating. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. So how does that differ? from when you were a college student and you were a division one athlete, you know, you had a, you had your, your teammates, you had your coach, you had the trainer, you have yeah. dual meets, you have the NCAAs. That isn't what scholar athletes do. Nope. I'm hands down. No, the closest person probably that's able to, um, in the swimming world, Nick Fink, he's working full time right now and he's married. He's been working and he's an engineer uh, by, by trade. He's kind of in that same ethos that I'm in. I've been doing this for over five years. I started working at the lab uh, in 2018, 2017 okay. with no expectation of ever coming back to swimming at all. I'm working, I'm training, and I'm going to school oh. as well. And I'm doing like all this stuff to like extend the longevity of my life. You're talking about extending longevity, but what you're actually doing is <laughs> you're actually increasing your speed. Yes, <laughs> that too. Yeah. So again, back to, to killing two birds with one yeah. stone. I really am a huge proponent and supporter of like, not just the short-term benefits but the long-term because when you have an event catastrophic that i've read your story about what happened with your yeah. heart attack and your stroke it's hits you home of like how precious life is and then when you see people that you are close to that are on that edge uh, or they they leave you and they you could see like they could have done so much more for themselves but they don't take care of themselves you can't can't control what your what your loved ones do or what other people do the only thing you can do is just lead through action and not say anything in hopes that people will um, take notice of that. I went to the University of Wyoming. I was a skinny little rat. Like uh, you'd probably say, get that kid a sandwich. I went on a, on a scholarship there. It was not an enjoyable experience. I blew my knee out uh, through bad strength and conditioning. Um, I was a very different person back then. I was majoring in Bachelor in Fine Arts, so I worked with my hands a lot. I was creative. Um, I didn't like taking tests. I was not a very good student academically. Did you <laughs> swim all four years? Yes, I did. I did not quit. That is the one thing I will say I'm proud of. To yeah. give us an idea, so mm -hmm. what was your best time in My your best <laughs> event there as <laughs> mm -hmm. as opposed to where you are now? So I made NCAAs in my senior year at so one, NCAA championship. Yeah, uh, okay. NCAA collegiate one, oh, and wow. NCAA call the like the elite, uh, of the, elite. The, the elite, and it was one fifty five three. Okay. Um, I just this last year yeah. in December, I'm 152.0. No way. Yes, I am at faster than I ever have been in my entire life in my 30s. 155 to what? Now, the, mm -hmm. what he means is one minute 55 seconds, <laughs> yes. one minute 52 seconds, which in three seconds we know in swimming, mm -hmm. three seconds is a long, long way. It is. It's like it's like a second is like a mile in a yes. swimmer's mind. <laughs> I mean, obviously the rules have changed, but my my physique. I'm a late bloomer. I've been late to the party uh, when it comes to athletic performance. I did not get faster in my 20s because one, I didn't have Katsu, and then the other thing, I didn't have the support system or resources. I'm still limited on resources, but I'm very, very creative and more mature now. I've been able to extend and fi keep finding a way to get faster, and it makes it and it makes it harder to leave the sport because it's like, you know, I, I'm just curious. I want to, I want to know more. I want to yeah. see where, how far I can take this. Well, what's interesting is I'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. at your arms as a mm -hmm. katsu person. Yeah. And I go, this is like perfect. It's like you're literally doing some forearm and bicep curls, but you're not. Yeah. And it's as I continue to keep reading the articles or continue to collaborate with people in the katsu global world, I find more and more benefits, if not new things of like, hey. You know, there's more to this. And because I train with these in the water, not these yeah, ones. Yeah, I yeah, use yeah. aqua bands in the water. Yeah. I had a power tower of like 100 pounds of water and like katsu and a weighted vest. And I was just like, just going at it. And, it, and I had to do like four, maybe 825s on two minutes or so like that. And I was probably pushing my body to the extreme, but I just, it's, it's not, yeah, the physical benefits are great, but I'm trying to do those things for my mentality, yes. thinking 
when my brain says, this is really hard, this is as far as I can go. No. Yes. And I think uh, Chris Morgan coined it as <laughs> race pain. Yes. So what you're experiencing, what he's doing is he's doing breaststroke, trying to lift this hundred pound amount of water up this sort of ladder. Mm -hmm. I, looking at it, it looks painful, but that little bit is allowing your mind to understand that pain is what? Temporary. <laughs> and then on the other side of pain is the very thing that we want to achieve. Being a division one athlete was not difficult at least now in my 35 year old self, trying to tell my 22 year old self or 21 year old self, no, I, I, I don't think my younger self would want to hear that. When you're doing your training with the katsu, mm -hmm. and I know how it feels, it's like, ah, I can't get there. But once mm -hmm. you get that feeling, once you've internalized that, that, ah, I can deal with this pain. How does that help you in a race? It makes it that much less painful because the pain threshold has been raised. Right. And when I go to a race, like say this morning, I was only going like 85, 85, 80, 90% effort. And I was on like a two second glide on every stroke, which is, that's a drill that you do in practice, but that's how efficient and how how in tune I am with my stroke and my pain yeah. threshold. I know where my personal limits are. Tomorrow, can you take me through your race day and how you incorporate katsu? When I get up in the morning, I kind of, again, do breathing exercises yeah. um, and I just kind of get myself centered. And then um, I drink like 60 ounces of water. I do the arms and then I you know, get breakfast and I uh, drive over the pool and I'm doing, I'm not getting in general warm up. I don't want to swim any more than I have to. <laughs> Which <laughs> I, is highly unusual. Yeah, they're, I mean, you go to these meets and you've yeah. seen them, Steve, like they're swimming twice. They're doing the general warm up at 7 a.m., which I want to sleep in. I'm rolling in around nine o'clock and, and the meet starts. So I'm already doing this yeah. and then I do like some dry land uh, exercises or some dynamic stretching and kind of yoga poses and try to really find a way to lengthen the, the the muscles out and get them loose and stay warm. You want to be warm, but you don't want to be sweating, right. sweating your electrolytes out. Get so in. you haven't gotten in the water yet. No, I haven't gotten in the water yet. And this is like this is like when everyone's starting to race, and I haven't even hit my, I haven't even done my general warm up yet. And I only swam once. I only swim once before my race. How many minutes do you think um, you do? I like no more than 30, 30 minutes. I mean, really? Probably 15, 30 minutes. I mean, the more you swim, we're not here to train. We're here right. to race. Right. Most of the events we're talking about now, it's they're controlled sprints or sprints now. I mean, Katie Ledecky's proven right. that yeah. and Caleb Dressel and all those all those uh, big wigs. Yeah. They've, they've shown that it's not just all distance swimming. So you're, you're about a, just a shade mm -hmm. over two minutes of intense when you're doing your tuna breast. Yeah. But you've literally prepared your body from the time you've woken up. Yes, I'm preparing my body. I'm getting geared up. I'm checking, you know, like, you know when you like check a car, like right, right. the oil, oh, you ch change your oil, get your brakes done. It, it's the same thing with the body. Yeah. Like you, it's you, you are the Porsche. Yeah. Um, and you have to take care of your body. You only get one and you have to really be in tune with it. <clears throat> now you, they're calling your heat up to the mm -hmm. starting blocks. Mm -hmm. When do you take these off? I take them off uh, at the last moment as possible. It just depends how I feel. Like, do I want to do legs or arms? Like, I was doing legs more this morning because the 200 is more, more crazy leg dominant. The 150 would be more like upper body dominant. So I try to keep them on as long as possible because then when I take them off, I get this like endorphin, this rush of like cooling sensation. Yeah. I feel like, ooh, it feels good. A lot of our track, Olympic track athletes say they feel lighter. Mm -hmm. what, what do you feel? What's that sensation? When you're in the water, you have to hold your breath sometimes. I don't feel as out of air because the air that I'm breathing in the race, I'm not going to really benefit from the nutritional value of that breath of oxygen until probably five minutes, maybe later or something like yeah. that. So the breaths I'm taking during the 200, it, no. I mean, what you're doing leading up to that is what counts. So doing all the breathing exercise, doing all the katsu. Because I remember doing the FINA World Cup Series in Indianapolis and I've never really done short course meters. And I was doing the 200 and I made top eight every time. I got third, which was really? crazy. I got third no in a 200 meter breaststroke, 205. And I was like, what? And and I, I was racing Reese Whitley and Nick Fink. Nick Fink was way on the other side. He snuck in there. He, Reese Whitley, he's a big yeah, dude. He, if you ever watched the race, I had the Katsu on and I took it off. And, and I felt this like, you know, I don't feel like I'm out of breath. I could have kept going. No way. I had this like over oxygenated in my blood. Yeah. Like it wasn't, it was very like pool. I didn't feel like I was out of breath or like dying of exhaustion. I could have pushed myself harder. So I found a new threshold. It's like, yeah. okay, 
Right? You don't be afraid of pushing those boundaries. That's an internal dialogue that we all have. I've never been to the Olympics in my in my in my entire career. Now keep that in mind. That mm -hmm. Getting on the U.S. Olympic team is the hardest thing in sports. It is. They only take two yes. people. Not like freestyle where they take six because they got more relays. It, two people. That's that's a very small margin for error of like of either success or, uh, or failure. For me, I, I've been, it happens every four years and the Olympic trials, this is my fifth Olympic trials. Really? And I've never made an Olympic team, which is strange when I tell people and I've never represented the United States in any major international competition. I was like, uh, on the US national team and I was like six. I didn't do well because I didn't have the resources to help myself there. So for training up to this point, I'm like, I'm trying to do less is more in quality. There are days where I have to do more in some ways and those days are harder because I'm like, well, it's about quality, not quantity. And I've done the quantity. I have huge base of experience with that. It's just maintaining that and then and then building for speed and strength and power and muscular endurance. And for the people who don't know much about the swimming world, there's a lot of these meets that lead up to it. We have world championships, the FINA World Cup series, we have the World University Games and Pan Ams and Pan Packs, and they take a certain few and they usually choose their pool of swimmers um, from on the US national team. You're doing katsu now. Mm -hmm. If you weren't doing katsu, Mm -hmm. And you, well, you didn't know Katsu existed. How would your training differ? I probably wouldn't be able to swim as much because recovery is key. And this is one major tool in my arsenal of supplementing and implementing recovery methods to help myself to keep training the next day. Inflammation is a big issue and it can be found in everything. I mean, because exercising intensely does create inflammation and lactic acid. So in other words, mm -hmm. Day by day, you mm -hmm. want your quality of workouts to be mm -hmm. high, as high as possible. Exactly. Without Katsu, I think it would be even more difficult. I think this would be an interesting experiment to try, Steve, where you would have somebody as dedicated as I am that has Katsu, and then have someone who's like the same age, if not somebody the same caliber, not use Katsu, or, or I don't care. I mean, I don't yeah, have yeah. to use Katsu for five years, but I, I swear I can't let go of these. Without Katsu, you probably won't be able to keep your performance level at its optimal, if not keep improving, and if you didn't have it, you probably would be, if not making smaller strides, but you'd be pretty stagnant. Because when we're young, we have a lot of natural pliability, lots of endorphins, lots of um, hormones, like, because we're growing, we're young. But when we stop, we sort of stop growing around age 25 and the testosterone starts to then yeah. kind of whittle down over yeah. the years go by. And this is where people sort of give up. Mentally, like most young swimmers, when something that used to serve them doesn't serve them well anymore, they can't let it go. Because they're like, well, it's not working anymore. It's like, well, you're dealing with a different body. Yes. And the hormones, the chemical, the biochemistry is different. And you have to be willing to be open to change and to excel yourself in a manner that will help you grow uh, this stuff like yeah. this you're mentioning all this mm -hmm. but your voice is so excited <laughs> I, I think it this is my impression yeah that this physiologically is a stimulant for your uh, additional enjoyment of the sport yeah you're right physically now i am more in shape than i was when i was in my 20s and teens yeah. i'm no joke and then you start to wonder how far can i take this and now you know why i love this guy he just <laughs> the, the enthusiasm is just off the charts Katsu equipment is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The statements made in this video have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Please consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new exercise or therapy program. This video is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical or professional advice. Katsu Global assumes no liability for any actions taken based on the information provided.